Acting out and you're spanking, that's two negatives. All right, well, I'll just put her in her room then. I just don't understand. <laughs> Dad. I just, I just don't understand. I just feel like, just let the kids be kids. You know? Honey, I feel like this is your fault when you do that because then you're just opting out of parenting and here I am. Having to do all yeah. Well, luckily for you guys, they called the interventionist. <laughs> and here I am, and we are going to come up with some strategies that you thank guys can you. use at home and then you can also use oh, thank while you. she's in daycare so that there's some consistency. And we're going to keep them positive. What kind of... Oh, what thank kind goodness, because I need something. Yes. <laughs> yeah, we, we've got some... Well, we're taking this wonderful pyramid class, class, and it is going to give us some wonderful strategies to use. Great. What are some strategies that you're using that are working? Well, I started using a, ch a star chart. Oh, what's that? Oh, so you know, you put your little chart on, and I put her little name up there, and everything I catch her doing good, I put a little star up there for her. And oh, she's never right. doing anything good. Well, you've got to catch her <laughs> that's doing good. Um, yes, that's you've got to catch her doing something good. Okay. So I just have a hold her hand and carry her along right with me. And so what are the things that you're, you're saying that she's doing good? Well, so I have a little library, and so I need her to go get the library book that has the kitty cat on it because we're going we're gonna to read the book about the kitty cat. And she went and got it today, and she had a star. Because she didn't See, rip the pages. Letting kids be kids and giving them reinforcement. I love Sorry. High five. Yes. 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 Yes.
kind of with my background, I worked at kinder care uh -huh. over here, and we had several kids, a lot of CCAM families, um, that went to the public schools for yes. preschool, special yes. needs preschool. Wonderful. They were, you know, perfect. Well, the transportation issue, parents are at work, they need to be at work from whatever, so we're happy to have them the half the day, preschool in the morning, right. come to kinder care in the afternoon. It was that, that piece of busing, you know, okay, Boulder Valley provides busing. Well, they come at 7 in the morning to pick up a child. Well, we're barely in ratio in our center, and we're expected to take that child out to the bus, and they won't oh, wait yeah. if we're not out there within a minute. Um, and then they come back. There's, I think for a while we had three buses practically following each other. And it was like, okay, this one's here, this one's going, this one's coming. Um, it was, so as far as the child care aspect, it was a challenge yeah. to get everything worked out. And so we talked about really the communication. Part of it was um, the preschool needed the information, the health form for mom, and it was sent to us and we had to get it to mom. So that piece of communication back and forth because mom's never at that school. Yeah. So it was just a lot, we kind of talked to just a lot about that communication and whose job, the procedures and, you know, what happens, there's day out of school, mom needs to communicate to us that she's going to be at childcare all day and there's Older belly, you know, though, just those little things of, hey, she's sick today. Well, let the preschool now. That's not, you know, mm -hmm. right. So, and just, that's really a great example of when there's so many, there's so many involved. pieces. It's yeah. not just parents and a school. There's a lot of people taking care of one individual yeah. kid, and you really need to be able to be able to communicate with each other. And maybe sometimes the parent isn't always the person who's going to be the most responsible for taking the lead in that collaborative melding of the minds. Um, so it has to be somebody else who's willing to step up and kind of organize it or work together, and you're getting a relationship with that school or the bus drivers and being able to say, can we sit down and work this out so that it's something that's helpful for us, really good for the student, because I'm sure the child, they feel that stress and anxiety. It's scary for them sometimes if they don't know Am I supposed to go to school today? Or something's different and they're not expecting it. So, um, great. I think that's an awesome example. Because like we found with the bus drivers, transportation is actually something that's totally overlooked as just a secondary thing. But it's a really important piece of the day. Because for them, that's the start of the day, their end of the day. And it can have a huge impact on how they feel about how their day went. So, awesome. Great job. I love your enthusiasm. Um, we just have a few more slides. You can stay where you want to move back if you like. Um, I think we've already touched on a lot of these things, but just some other things you can do to improve inclusion. Talk to the families. Get some input from them. Like I said, a lot of times they will be a great resource, especially if they've been, um, if their child has had um, special needs for a long time. They, been in this situation, they know what's going on. Um, talking to your provider network or the other local child care resources, even child clients, even trying to attend those IEP or IFS meetings. So when the child is identified, you're going to those meetings, not only to contribute, but also to hear what's going on in the other parts of that child's life and what their goals are. Um, talking to the local school districts, um, Early childhood councils here are amazing and they have a ton of resources and Broomfield has a really strong one so um, that's another great uh, resource for everyone. Um, and just other organizations that provide services for individuals with disabilities. Molly's Family Works um, with adults who have special needs or disabilities. Um, so I overheard a parent just the other day asking her for some suggestions or recommendations because it does get tricky once you get out of this. In some ways, preschool is a little cute, perfect safe bubble, bubble. Safe. <laughs> and once you get out into the big world, um, things get a lot more complicated and difficult. So there are other places with services for people who have grown out of that preschool component. And then 
Handoff 2.10 has another, this special request, special quest includes the planning checklist, which is really geared more towards the home visiting programs. Um, the one you saw before, um, well, this one is program based, which we already talked about and it had a link in it. Um, so if you want more information about checklists um, as you dive into inclusion, those are some resources for you. And here's just some other general um, resources. I mean, we use Child Find a lot. Um, the Peak Center, they're just having a conference that's coming up. Their Peak Inclusion Conference is coming up really soon. So there's a lot of other things you can do, places you can go to get more information. That, that Peak um, Conference is all about inclusion from preschool all the way through elementary school, or probably even more. Um, so the big messages here are, even though it can be hard, and everyone acknowledges that, um, inclusion is the best practice because A, it's the law, and B, we have research that, and data that supports it. And, and really, if we all put a little time and effort into thinking of strategies, um, we can solve any problem. And the administration and leadership team can definitely make a lot of headway by um, ensuring its importance and putting it at the forefront of the upcoming um, priorities for the organization. So, you have your thought seed in the very last page, it's handout 2.12. How would your behavior change, but this is in regard to inclusion? Um, what might you apply to the family and children that you work with? And what might you take back to your team co-workers? If that's pertinent. So take a few minutes to apply that. <laughs> Vanessa is also going to pass out um, a training evaluation. So every time we finish a set of sessions, we'll give you an evaluation. That's just for feedback for us, especially as we're going through the um, certification. the evaluations on the table or you can put them in a pile I guess if you wanted to be if you want us to fill it out right yes thanks or you can do it after too so number of children Yeah. When you're in charge of the 
you guys get out of here. I, I know we have a couple of late nights, so I don't want to repeat it. Um, did anyone have anything that they really wanted to share that they felt like was an aha moment or something they really got out of this session on inclusion?
rely on research and to know that there's always information out there and to continue to research, you know, the available information. Um, just to not always just take the answer that's in front of you. But just a nice little reminder, seeing some of the pieces yeah. that are pulled, like, oh, you know, i got to keep researching something, you know. Yeah, I like the review of just the laws. Yeah. I think people yeah. forget that it's the law to mm -hmm. provide these. just what I've read or what I've seen, but I've not been in the field. So it's, you know, the program has been designed to meet my level too. Like, as a beginner, there was a lot that I could understand. Thank so you. I like the way it's been designed. Anything else? Things you want different for next time? Well, we didn't get an answer to the trivia question because I kind of blew it for a while before we take the break. But the prize was in honoring our theme of inclusion. I have a sign language book, and I'm going to give it to Annie because she mentioned that language was often a barrier. And I have to say that's something that I have always included in my work with kids in our classroom because we have a lot of kids who are nonverbal, and we just pair it with the words all the time, and we're teaching everyone in the class how to say the words so that they know that when somebody says please or I want this, that it doesn't have to be something that's different because we can hold to it. So maybe a few sound language words will get you started. So um, with that, uh, oh, the company. Yeah. Shoot it up. There. <laughs> oh, so we did that. And so, if for some reason you want some more information, this is the general pyramid plus contact information. And then in the email I sent, you have the contact information for Vanessa and I. So otherwise, we are set. Next week won't be quite so long. We'll just have one session. It'll be the um, effective workforces. Um, so we're going to start at the bottom of the period and just slowly go up. Um, and if you need to get in touch with us in the meantime, let us know. And Vanessa and I will work on the parking lot issues, and if we don't email it to you beforehand, we'll have the answers at the next training session. So, and Brooke and I are going to try to do these trivia questions for each session, so make sure you make it up there and put your answer yeah, in. Yeah, we'll have to start doing it at the beginning, yeah. so I don't spoil yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And then, uh, if you guys could just leave your name tag on the table as with your evaluations, that would be great, and we'll see you for next time. Thank you guys all so much for coming and for staying so time with us. We really appreciate it. Perfect. I get to see you every week. I love it. I know I wouldn't have to have a ball for me. I was like, there was some boys like students. I was like, 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 I was